Hello and welcome to another Nicomedia tutorial. Yeah, it's a little longer since I made my last tutorial, but uh, you know we had holidays and something else. And exactly on 24th of December my main PC crashed and I had to buy everything new and still not everything here. And uh, yeah, and now I try this to record this on my one of my render slaves here and it's a weaker machine, but no, no, not weaker, but... Uh, has not such a good graphic card in it, so maybe it works a little slower and I hope the recording will work. And yeah, just let's try it. I hope you all got uh, well into the new year and you are healthy and happy and everything. And yes, so uh, today we will make this, uh, this title here from the new uh, Spider-Man movie. And these are uh, some screen captures of the, from the movie and uh, from the trailer and uh, we will try this i made it and i came out with this here so and we will try to today to create to recreate something like this letter here and yeah this is rendered with octane but i will do it today with with a normal physical render here in, in cinema and i think we get almost the same result here so I would say let's start. Why not? So first we need a letter, of course. So I need to go to the spline and text. Uh, hi Nico. <laughs> uh, this will not uh, be your default, I think. It's my default settings, just so don't uh, don't think about it. <laughs> Yeah, so we need just an R, and for the font I took a normal Arial black here. Okay, I, I take this R because it's one of the hardest letters to, to make, so if you can do it this with the R, you can do it with every letter. And so now I want to have a, spli uh, a sweep around this, so I need a profile. And if I see here, if I watch, the profile looks like this here somehow. And so let's try to make something like this. And yes, so I go in the front view. Uh, so make this invisible for the moment. And let's say I want a yeah, rectangle. That 50 by 50 should be okay here. Then the height about 5, okay. And I make it editable with C on the keyboard. Go in point mode and let's see what we need. I select these two points here and right click and subdivide it. Uh, uh, four times I think is okay. Yes, for the moment. Now I just make the profile for the for this so it's nothing special. You can make any profile you want, so it will work with everything. Here, okay. Then I would say I make here a subdivide again. Right click and here on this cockwheel or this small one here, you can change the subdivision. So I go back to two. Okay. Now I take this two. T for scale, scale it up a little bit and just do something, something like this. Yes. Maybe here a little up again. So something like this should work. Now I take these points and make a smooth transition here. So uh, interpolation or transition, a soft interpolation. And here, these edge points here, right click and jump for it a little bit. So something like that. Okay, let's see. This is our profile spline here. And we know we need for a sweep, we need the profile and the, the spline. 
So I take the profile, I select it, go to my sweep and Alt on your keyboard, hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the sweep. So it becomes a parent to the rectangle here. And now drag the text under it. That looks horrible because we have not the right axis. If you try now to uh, to rotate this this uh, profile, it won't work. You see, it does nothing. It doesn't matter in which direction. What you have to rotate is the axis of this of this uh, profile here. So let's go to the axis tool here, enable axis, and now we can rotate. If you see now, if you rotate, get something like this. Hold your shift key on your keyboard so you have increments of 10 here. And yeah, but I want it in the other direction. So go with the other, minus 90. Okay, that's something I want. That's something I like. But we see we have a lot of problems here. The next thing we make is we go to the text. We try to avoid this, these intersections here. So we are an adaptive here, that's okay, but go up with the angle here. So, and you see, if we go down, and what we go up, because we use later a subdivision surface, so 20 should be okay, I think. With NB, I can uh, see my mesh here. And that looks quite nice, yeah. That's, that's okay everywhere. Nice, okay. Now I make a backup folder for, for this, because uh, if I make something wrong, I can go back later. But normally, you know, I have these scripts. If you have seen my other tutorials, I have these scripts and everything. But this is a new install of, of uh, Cinema. And I have nothing here, so let's make it without the scripts. The backup folder is nothing more than null. Name it backup. And hide it. So, if you want to... Uh, change both lights here, this is, this is traffic lights, uh, hold the Alt key, so you change both. If you don't hold the Alt key, if you hold nothing, you change just one. So I want the, the, the upper one is here for, for the editor, seen by the editor, and the lower here is uh, seen for the render. Okay, so I put a copy of this sweep, control, drag it in the backup folder. And so I have my copy. And I save this on desktop, okay. Spider man. So okay. Next thing is I want to put this whole thing in a subdivision surface. So I go to my sweep and put it in the subdivision surface. Hold my Alt key, subdivision surface. But now I see, oops, that's not really what I like. So what we have to do, we have we need sharper edges here. And we do it like this. So we have to make our text spline here editable. So I uh, just press C on my keyboard, select the text and press C on your keyboard. Then I go in the point mode. So I'm here in the in the axis mode. So so let's go out of the axis mode again. Go in the point mode. And now I go here in this view. Here I have my point from the from this text spline. I activate this, and you see, okay, this is our subdivision surface, and this is our spline. But now, if I go to my text in the point mode and press K for the knife or in R18 KK or KL for, for no KK for line cut KK or K in the R17 and down and just make a cut somewhere here and here so so I make a cut something like this you see we have a sharp edge here we have here a point now and here a, a point so now if I want it sharper here 
just select this point and go closer to here something like that and select this point and go closer to here and now I have a very nice edge here and nothing intersects and nothing is bad everything looks fine here and so I do it everywhere where I need a hard edge so go down here KK with a knife make a cut here so something like this go to the point here and something like this so next here so I cut again KK cut it something like this go down here and go down here here the same but here we have to be a little careful we don't need a cut here because we have a close point here we just need a cut here so okay, okay and I cut somewhere here and that should be okay yes that's okay this rounding I want here I want cuts so again KK I want to cut here and to cut about here uh, here I can't uh, track here I must track here with my eye but it's okay for me like this if you want it closer so go Oops, if you want it closer, so go something like this here. But for me, it's, it's okay like this. It's, it's, it looks okay. Then, we, of course, we need here. Okay, okay. Whoops. Here again, but uh, maybe a little down, so something. Something like that should be okay. Here we could cut it, but I think it's okay here. Let's try it, but uh, I think it would be too sharp then. So let's try with KK and make just a cut down here. Uh, it's not really, and we get here the intersections. Here. Let's see it here. We have here then hit intersections. And this is what I don't want. So now I could go here up a little bit. Or so, something like that. But then I get an, an uh, un nice curve here. So I go back and I let it like this. You can play with, with, with it if you want to charge sharper. Just play with the points, make points between here and play with it. <clears throat> but I think it's okay like this. It's, don't have to be so sharp it looks sharp enough for me okay the next things is just these two guys here so kk again and whoop and here a little down i try to be a little apart from this edge here so if it yeah something like this so here a little space between it, it's okay. KK again. And if you have something select like this point here now, uh, be aware that here restrictor selection is not checked because if it is checked, uh, nothing would happen if you if you uh, cut because this, this one point is checked. So here now it doesn't matter because we have not restricted the selection so we can work with it. But be careful here so, but KK. That's the reason I always uh, click somewhere in the viewport. If I have something select, I always click somewhere in the viewport as nothing is selected. And, and so you can avoid some problems here. So, okay. That's okay too. Yeah, that's okay. 
Now we should have a nice R here. And I see, yeah, this is a nice R. So, of course, I have no render settings here, but we have a new install, and so I have to do everything new. I want to render with the physical render, of course. I want ambient occlusion, and I want global illumination later on. For the moment, not. Ambient occlusion, yes. So we have nothing transparent, but I will add it. Oh, no, I don't have to check it. We have nothing transparent. So. Okay, okay, the output here is okay. The options here. Normally, I, I it should be three, okay. Train is a little faster, but. Okay, let's save. Nice, so save, control S, and control R to render it fast. Yeah. Let's see if we see some mistakes or something else. That looks not round, of course, because we can go to the subdivision surface here. Go to the subdivision editor to three. And now it gets better. And if it's not enough for you, go to the four. But uh, if you're far, uh, far away, so something like this later on, so we go something like this. It, everything looks nice and round here. Okay, the next step is we need something inside this R here. And for this we can steal here the R, this text spline here. So copy it out, control, drag it out. And just make it an extrusion. Extrude here. And so select the text, Alt key on your keyboard and click on extrude. Good so far. And okay, 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 okay. We have now an extrusion of 20 here. So we have to go with the spline to so that we are in the middle of this of this R here. We have to go with the spline to minus 10 in the set axis. Oops, I am in the point mode and have a point selected, <laughs> so I, I move just this one point. So I go back to the object mode, text spline, minus 10. Okay, I'm in the middle now. But this is a little too much here. Let's see how it looks in the original. That's it's not few, but but it's not so deep like in my thing here. So let's make this about thirty. Of course, we have to go now with the text spline to minus fifteen. Looks better, but not good enough. And you see, we come out with with this extrusion. We come out here a little bit, but with this we will. Uh, this we will correct later. So, but it's still too far. So, so ah, let's try 40. It's the extrusion. 40 and minus 20 here. Not 120, just 20. And that should be okay. Yeah, that should be okay. So now we have to play a little bit here. We just have to move some points. So I go here to my text spline, go in the point mode, and select all the points now. And I see we have a smooth, and we, maybe we are better with a linear interpolation here so we can better change the so I want to go to this point here you see we are out here so just drag it down somewhere like here but be careful we don't go uh, out over here because then we have a have a hole here you see 
So try, try to stay inside inside this uh, frame here. So the same here. Go. If I want here, I can make it just a cut here. So, okay, and just drag this a little up here. It's a little uh, playing, a little, little passion playing, but it's not so much work. So, just look at the. We just have to be careful, don't see it here and don't go over this edge here, so that's, that's it. That's the magic. <laughs> and I'm sure we will get this. And now if we go here down, we have here a small hole now, so let's just Okay, okay, let's just cut here, take this point and move this point up here, so. here the same, <clears throat> okay, go inside here, and here we have no problem, but it's too close for me, so just cut it. So, so you have to be a little patient, but but I think you are patient. You wouldn't look, you wouldn't watch my tutorials if you're not patient. So, okay, that's all good now here. Next one is here. Okay. And the reason is I have gone in the line uh, in the linear mode because if we would have here Bezier or something else, we have, we would have some some waves here and some some, and we don't need it. So here, just go up here. Next one here. So so maybe I make a small cut here. So, okay, and we are almost done. So, so, ok, 
aquí. So now we are. So on the other side is everything. This should be. Ah, we have here. Forgot here one. So on the other side, of course, everything should be the same. It's one spline. So <laughs> okay. In the inside, we need we need to do something here. We need to play a little bit. So let's go out to here. So. so let's make a cut here. So here, of course, we need a cut then. But you see, it, it, it works quite fast, so, so it's not really hard work. Okay. And you get practice, of course, and you get faster and faster. So, so, and so, this should be it. Yes, we are done. You see, maybe five minutes and we have everything nice. And we can start to texturize. Save it. Control S to texture, 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 texture. Okay. The outside will be a red metal thing, and the inside will be so it's a honeycomb thing, like here. Okay. Let's make the red metal. That's that's easy. So I go with N A. I can see it without my mesh. Uh, here, Let's see, we don't we have problems here. Whoops! And bye bye problem. Here the same. Of course, if you if you have the mesh, uh, you don't see everything, so it's better to work without mesh here. So, but it's no problem. Uh, even if you have to finish, we have some problems. We can change everything. We can change the the, the point positions every time. But now it looks okay. Okay, safe again. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, here. Yeah. No, that looks just from, from far. That would get problem, but here, no. Okay, so now let's start with texturing. Make a red metal. Double click in the material uh, editor, uh, material window here. Double click on the material. This is my default material. I've not select nothing and so. Okay, the first for the metal I need just reflectance. I go to my reflectance channel with GGX. 
and Fresnel, let's say conductor and something like silver. Okay, no specular and maybe 10 or 15, I see it later. And I want the rent metal, so I go to the color channel here and make uh, something like this. Okay. Metal is quite easy here, so let's put this on the sweep knobs. So here in the R18, you, you see the reflections now. In the earlier versions, you don't see these reflections. This in the earlier version, it would look like this then. <laughs> so. Okay. But now I want to uh, see it if it, when it's rendered, so I make I take my Nicomedia Scene League Pro, of course. Go to the content browser to my favorites, Nicomedia Scene League Pro. And just drag it in my project here. Save the file. I don't need a floor because uh, so when I render it like this here, uh, like this here, I need to don't see the floor, so don't need the floor. So I go to my HDMI background and floor here, and floor on, nope. Now go close. And make an Alt R for an interactive render, Alt R. So, but now I make in the render settings, global illumination. I want here quasi Monte Carlo and custom samples with 16 samples. And then physically, I go to progressive. And now Let's see what we get. Oh, at first, of course, I need something to reflect. So I go to my HDRI settings, go to my rig, to the studios, and take a studio and drag it in here. And immediately we see what to get. And this looks not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. So, and now we come to the honeycomb thing. Of course, we can later. Uh, uh, make uh, some other materials or make it a little uh, nicer, but now the, the in more in interesting uh, texture is of course this honeycomb texture thing here. For this, we need a new texture, of course. So double click in the material manager. So that's the name for it, <laughs> and. Go to the reflectance. Now I want the dielectric thing. Let's see, this orange texture looks like beer. Let's say beer, why not? No reflectance, and here about 15. Okay. Here I want color. So I go to my color channel and do something like this orange thing here. And just drag it on my extrusion here. So that's the first thing. The next thing is we need. I made this this honeycomb texture, this pattern with the displacement. So that means that means I need in my extrusion here. I hit NQ to deactivate the textures for the moment. And NB to see the mesh. This is the subdivision we don't need at the moment. I go to my extrusion here and I need here on the cap, I need more polygons. So I go to my extrude, caps, and from the end ones I go to quadrangles and to regular grid. So now I have some polygons, but I want more. So I go to my text here. And see, I go from the adaptive to subdivided, and from five to let's say three centimeter should be okay. And this three centimeter, 
I take here on the width for the regular grid to three centimeter. Now you see we have a very nice grid here and we have enough subdivisions to, to play with the uh, displacement later on. Because if you don't, I'll show you later the, the uh, difference. So, uh, next thing is I want this extrusion. I always want to make, create single object out of it. So, it's here, it's not really uh, necessary, but uh, I do it every time. And now I see, uh -huh, so because of this new. Because of this subdivision now and not not adaptive, we have here some problems. But you know we can easily fix this. Okay. It's okay. This was the first, the only problem here. That's a nice thing, you can fix everything very easy here. Good. Now I want this honeycomb texture. Make Alt R for the interactive render. Go to my texture. Now I go to the displacement. And I want the displacement just in one direction, not in not, not both directions. So I go now from intensity center, I go to intensity and go to my surfaces and here I take the tiles here. Okay, and I know I need subdivisions later. You see now it looks like this, but with subdivisions it would look much better of course. It looks like this. And here now I don't want squares, I want hexagons. And I don't want it like this, I want just black and white. So I leave this black here and make this white. And just drag this white, the other squares here, just drag it down. I get this here. First what I see, it goes in the wrong direction. So I go up one here and go to and then it's not much too, too far, so minus one. Okay. Next one I see that is too big and it goes in the... Now it comes that this, this frame, this edges come out, and but I want to these edges inside and the inside outside, blah, 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 <laughs> you know. So I need here a white uh, and the other black. So no problem, I go to here and drag the white up. Make here a black one and drag the blacks here. Okay, so far so good. I don't need so much bevel width, so go here to five maybe. Okay, and here I see them too big, so let's try with the global scale of 50. Better, but maybe too big, still too big, 40. Thirty. Yeah, let's say thirty, and it's too deep for me. so. Let's say here, uh, maybe fifty percent should be enough here. Yes, this this looks better, and we are almost done. But the, I I need I want this uh, nicer here so. Uh, the next thing what I want, I want to see, I want more reflectance, of course, more, more reflectance. Let's see, five is maybe too much. Let's see if we can find a better angle to... So Alt R and NQ to see my textures. Then I go to my rig here. Go to HDRI settings and want the preview. Preview on. Make it a little smaller, the preview. Do -do -do -do. And rotate it a little bit. So maybe something like this. Alt R.
uh, this could work. Maybe rotate it a little. Well, maybe we take later on another HDRI, but for the moment it's it's okay, I think. Let's see. And what I want, I don't want a white background here. I want something, some dark background here. But we are not ready with the texture, so <laughs> I just go to my background drawer and go down with the brightness. Okay. And what I want now is I want this, uh, yeah, what I want to show you is now we have, because of the subdivisions we have uh, on our cap here, we have this nice pattern. If we would say no, we, we don't need subdivisions, like the end guns, we get almost, now we get this. So we need our subdivisions, we, we need our regular grid to get nice uh, displacement. So the displacement has something to work with. Uh, see, that's quite a difference. Huh? So it's maybe it's too deep, still too deep. But you can do it, of course, however you want. But for me, it's still too deep. Yeah, that's better. And maybe it's too the. the Spaces in between make it more two two. Yeah, that's better. But two two is too less. You see it here. Three three. Maybe we can play with the. Delta. It doesn't matter here. So. Okay, but I think I'm 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 okay with this. And what I want is I want these hexagons that they are on the outside a little darker as in the inside. So, and now we see how we can do this. First, I want a little luminance here on top. And when I say a little luminance, I mean a little luminance, but. It almost looks like in our end here. Well, there's more orange here, but that's not bad. Let's give it to 50. Okay, and I want now these dark things. For this, I copied these tiles here. So right click, copy, go to my color channel, and paste it here in the texture channel. What I get now is this. And this is not what I want, of course. I want uh, the brighter things dark and, and, the, and the, the darker things bright. So, of course, I go here and make it here black and make it here white. Whoops. So. And what I want now is uh, a bevel with, let's say, big bevel. And I get this here. We have we are now on the outside dark, and on the inside we are brighter. So now I go here to multiply. And I get exactly what I want. But this is too dark for me, so I just go with the strength down until I like it. And this is kind of subsurface scattering, so you can fake it. Yeah, 
and if it's too dark, go to the luminance channel and go from here up a little bit. So say I'd 80. And now we have here a dark edge here. In the middle we are brighter. And I think it looks quite nice. So that's it for this. And now I try to make some uh, higher render and we will see what we get. Save it so that I don't lose it. Okay. Alt R to deactivate the interactive render region. And I make a, I'm back in a second. You won't realize it, so I'm pause. Okay, I don't have to render it uh, to the final because you see here, I hope you see it. Let's go to these things here. And that means we have two less subdivisions. So we have two uh, possibilities. We can uh, make this our grid with two centimeter or we go to five subdivisions. So let's try what we can do. I stop this render. And now I'm just on physically with uh, adaptive medium and all for default, so nothing fancy. So now we can go to our extrude here and go to here to two centimeter and two centimeter on the extrude here, or we go just one subdivision more here to go to here to five. And now let's try it again to render. Needs a little longer now, of course. Go back to 100% here. But you see the difference. Just one step more and then we have this difference. And I think it looks quite nice. Maybe I want it here not so dark or not so 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 far inside here that's easy to do just go to the uh, color channel here to the tiles and from the 80 bevel go to maybe 50 and maybe a little more oh let's try 100 why not and render it again it renders quite fast so we don't have to stop the, the recording, I think. Yeah, that looks better. What I will do now is, we still have some jaggy edges here. So I, what I do now is I make the grid uh, smaller. So go here to the text with two, two centimeter make here the extrusion to two centimeter let's see if everything works here yes <laughs> uh, the, i can deactivate here my, my preview so okay and train that now now it should be much cleaner, a uh, clearer, uh, sharper or whatever. <laughs> it needs, of course, again, a little longer to render. But now we have a uh, nice... Yeah. With this I can leave, yes. And here now it's not so, so dark. It's just a little darker orange here and here, a little brighter. So now I try again a good render. Let's see how it works. So, Okay, it looks now like this. But what I don't like is now, uh, I think that the uh, honeycombs, this, this hexagons are still too big and not, now not deep enough maybe. So let's change this. Yeah, now I made an, a higher render, so I can't do physically. Here, everything to the default. And, but preparing the subdivisions, I took three instead of two. And ambient occlusion subdivisions, same, three instead of two. 
and with the aim of the occlusion sub uh, I've gone from uh, maximum ray length from 100 to 20 don't need 100 this is too much this this ray length means how far a cinema looks uh, where is in the next edge where is the next uh, where meets the next polygons and something is and how far should I look so I said look just 20 centimeter and if it would be something out of this 20 centimeter it wouldn't wouldn't be affected by the ambient occlusion with 100 centimeter of course it looks 100 centimeter far so and now but go back here to the progressive renderer yeah back to two and alt r for the interactive renderer and let's see what we can do here. I want, as I said, deeper. So let's try it now with 100. Yes, that looks immediately better. And smaller honeycombs here, 30 maybe to 20. Of course, I have to go in then with the this here again to 20 uh, to 22. So yes, uh, it's maybe it's better. I think maybe I make it. A little darker on the outside, let's see. A bright on the inside, uh, let's see how it looks. Let's go to the diffusion here, maybe to 120. And here. Oops, a little more. But as I said, here you can play how, uh, how you want. But I can make it a little bigger here because we have this luminance channel brighter. So we can go here darker. Yeah, that's that's more what I need. What I want. Not 80 is too much. 50 was okay. Make the luminance by 110. And again, render it. So let's see what we get now. Alt R. Yes, okay, I see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with this result. I have all what I want. I have this deeper uh, honeycombs here. I have this, this darker edges on the honeycombs. I have a nice material here. Only what I don't like, maybe we can change is, and maybe we take another HDRI. It's because here it's dark in the inside, maybe we get, it will be brighter, I think, when we render it with, uh, well, let's try, why not? When we render it uh, with uh, light mapping is, let's make it a little bigger. Maybe that's better. So go down here a little so it doesn't render so long. Here 20 is okay. 3, 3, so. And yes, and I just need a uh, interactive render region. I just need it. Just need to render this region here, so I can go to my 
render settings output and here I go to my render region yes and I say copy from IAR R. so now I have this part here and if I render this no, so alt R to, to deactivate this and if I render now it should render just this part here see so I don't have to render it all again and so I can compare what I do so this is with light mapping and now without light mapping yes, let's see if we get difference won't be much if we see something no we don't see nothing okay that doesn't matter let's try it with an other HDRI, but uh, this you could try by uh, by yourself because it's just time what we need now. So, but so go to my content browser and no first I need to select this one. Okay, and maybe end it with this. Ah, it is totally dark. Let's see how it works with this one. Here we have some very bright lights. I don't have on this on this machine I don't have my HDRI collection my, my, my big one so it's uh, maybe here we get but we had this before I think too so the only thing we could oops this is saturation don't need the saturation only thing I could do is to play with the fill light maybe let's go back to somewhere here let's activate the fill light but I think it will go too bright for the whole scene yeah this makes the whole scene bright but not exactly what I want oh that makes the other things bright 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 Ah, uh, but it's okay. With another HDRI you get, of course, nicer results. But uh, as I said, I don't, and so of course, it's easy to... So. Wait, 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 let's make so. Yeah, that looks better. Something like this. Maybe another... Let's go. I go to my camera, activate my camera here, and go. Go here, go up and down. Okay, okay, okay. And maybe in the focal length I go to 25 let's see what we get here now I think this could work Yes, 
So I like it. Very nice reflections here, 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 and everywhere. Maybe the red is a little too bright, so we can go to to the red and make it a little darker here. Oops, okay. Yeah. Okay, that is what I like. Let's make a final render and we are done with this hour with this lesson. So, Alt R to deactivate the interactive render region. I make a render. Okay, so that's it now. And what I forgot is uh, in the original, in my version, I made here on the edges in the profile here a small rounding so that it looks at it comes in here so uh, you can do this now if you want this I can do it easy I don't st stop this I just bring it down and deactivate my camera here so and you can do this like uh, with this profile here so just hide this for the moment hide the sweep hide the text for the moment oh no we need we need everything so that we can see it uh, so no problem what i don't need here is the mesh so n a and i don't need the textures n q I just want to see this edge here. So for this, I go to my profile here. Take this point and this point here. Okay. Make a subdivision here. Uh, make it so we see more. Subdivide it should be okay no it's not okay I need more subdivisions so subdivided by three should be okay yes here this point at this point T for scale and scale it like this this and now I have to see where we are here so I have to subdivide it again subdivide again take this and this to T for scale scale it like this and E for move and move it up a little bit and you see, we get here some something like an edge here. I don't need it so far. T for scale. Now I select this, 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 and this. T for scale. And scale it so here you see the rounding now. And I want it somewhere here. Yeah, somewhere here and now I can take this and make a jumper and jumper it a little bit now I see we have a nice rounding here and that makes that makes a difference believe me <laughs> and of course we have it now everywhere then of course so here it's too the rounding it's everywhere where it should be but I don't render it now. Oh, why not? I render it again. So here, how far we are here? We are already here. So I have, I have it here. I have two open. <laughs> okay. Now I render the same here. Go to my back to my camera. Activate it. 
and render this scene. And then we will see if we see it. And maybe I just imagine a an, an difference. But let's see. So I'm back in a second. Okay, you don't see much, but <laughs> I know it's there. You, maybe you see the difference. This is the first one. This is with the rounding. If we make a closer render, of course you see it more. But I know it's there, and that's what I know what I want. The rounding is here, so I'm I'm happy with this render. Okay, of course you can now bring this to Photoshop and and make it even clearer. Well, we can put this to Photoshop. Why not? I just copy it to Photoshop. I don't do it in 16 bit. In 16 bit, you get better results. But just to show uh, quick what what you can do in Photoshop. So just copy this. Go to Photoshop. And uh, now it's the German version, but uh, for the, for this is it's okay. Uh, file new from clipboard and Control V to paste it in. So now let's make here a smart object and Control Shift A to come in the RAW filter here. So, go to 100% here. Just clearness, the clarity up is, you see that it's a much difference. It's, it's great. Go, go totally up with the clearance. That's okay for here, maybe more dynamic. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Uh, Control Alt Shift E to make a new from this uh, layers a new layer. Again, make a smart object out of it. And now I go to my Nick collection filter. You find every links in the description, of course. So. So that I'm, I'm here in the recording area. And here we can play again. Let's say we want uh, maybe details enhancement. I don't think we need, we really need this too much, maybe. Yeah, that's almost too much. Let's go down to 10 here. But we played so much with the clarity, we don't need this enhancement. Let's maybe uh, darken outside light and inside. It's yes, why not? And add a filter. And here, let's see. I go to natural density. Yeah, I get nice colors here. Okay, and maybe now, add, to, add another one now at the detail enhancement. Just 10%. This makes it a little brighter again. Yes, and it is alike. We have wonderful colors here. We see this orange goes to yellow here and everything okay this is great this is the nick filter upon it and yes i like it save it yes oops spider-man on desktop okay so and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have questions, just ask me, write me on Facebook or here in the comments or somewhere else where you will find me on my website or somewhere. And every link you need, you will find in the description. And yes, uh, sorry for this uh, waiting between uh, the, from the last tutorial until now, but Yes, I had holiday too, so <laughs> and my, as I said, my, my uh, machine crashed uh, terrible. <laughs> so, and now, 
yeah, that's it. And I try, maybe I'll make another tutorial tomorrow. So to this weekend I have a little time, so why not? And I see it works quite nice with this render slave here too, so, so why not? And yeah, so hope you liked it, hope you learned what and uh, have a wonderful and healthy and successful uh, year 2017. And I wish you all, all the best from my heart. So, tschüss und baba.